Today I have a real special message. It's for the battered and tattered souls, the hurting people, those who are feeling hopeless. Maybe you've suffered long and you wonder if Christian life is even going to work for you. It's very difficult when, when you've been in a situation where there was no trust, there was very little love, you've suffered a lot of rejection, and you don't know for sure where God is anymore. I think it'd be appropriate that we would just ask God for guidance through this lesson. Father, we turn to you and we thank you that you have given us another opportunity to listen to your word, to listen for your leading of your Holy Spirit, and to rekindle a little hope in the smoking flax, and to give a little strength to the broken reed. We just ask you, God, to to bless the word as it is spoken, that it will enter into the hearts of those who have a longing to be close to you, and by faith and humility, it will spring forth into life eternal. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The question is today is, who is eligible for salvation? Well, I think everybody's eligible. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Jesus didn't come into the world to judge the world, but that the, the world be, would be saved. And if Jesus didn't come to judge, who are we to judge? And say, this one can have it, and that one can't. This one is eligible, but that one's not. This one has sinned away all grace. Uh, th this one here is okay. It's not for man to say that. I want to, to bring a couple of illustrations today. There is a lady here I'm going to read out of uh, Mark chapter 5. And she had an issue of blood. And it said that she had had it for many years and she had spent all of her living. I'll read that now. A woman in the crowd who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding, she had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. And she had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, If I can just touch the robe, I will be healed. Immediately the bleeding stopped, and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. And Jesus realized at once the healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, Look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. And then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace, your suffering is over. You know, when, when, uh, when Jesus asked, Who touched me? She could have ran away. But she was honest. And I think that is a huge part of finding a healing is honesty of heart. We have different illustrations in the Bible. There's the illustration of the woman at the well and um, Jesus asked her to draw water and she said, why are you asking me? And because you're a Jew and, and uh, then he said, if you knew what water I had, you would ask me for living water. And then he tested her a little bit and he said, um, go and get your husband. And she was honest. She, she had an honest heart. And she said, I have no husband. And he said, you've spoken the truth. And so uh, he said, you've had five husbands, and the man you're living with now is not your husband. But then because of the honesty of her heart, and because of her faith, and because of her humility, God used her to bring the whole village to Jesus. 
And he's still using people today who have an honest heart. He, uh, what God wants is to have a relationship. He wants to, to be our father. I have a friend, and I don't think he'll mind me telling this story, but he's an intelligent person, and intelligent people uh, tend to overthink. They t sometimes tend to have doubts, and um, he had doubted for many years, and he said he was laying in bed uh, one night, maybe two or three in the morning, and, and he said, I was just talking to God, and he said, you know, God, sometimes I doubt if you're real. I really do. And he said God spoke to him, and it hit him like a thunderbolt. Jesus said, I doubted too one time. I doubted on the cross. Do you remember what I said? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he said, I, 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 was just, I just realized that we all doubt. It's okay to doubt. It's okay to tell God you doubt. God's going to be able to speak to you personally. No matter what you've suffered, no matter what, how deeply you've been betrayed, no matter how, how you've been abused, no matter how you've been manipulated. This lady that we just read about, she had been to many doctors and they had hurt her and she paid them to hurt her. And she left one and she went to the next and he hurt her. She suffered many things. And, and she was almost at, a, at, at the end of uh, her hope. Her hope was so weak, and she heard about Jesus. And she uh, somehow, it, it touched her heart, and she just thought, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. And so she went and did that, and she touched the hem of his garment, and she was healed immediately. It was by her humility and her faith. And that's always the way we receive healing. It's when we are humble and we are faithful. Now I want to read another story uh, about another man. And we call him the rich young ruler. And he came to Jesus and he said, Good master, what good thing can I do to uh, inherit eternal life? And of course Jesus said, Why do you call me good? There's none good but one and that's God. And, and so maybe I'll just tell the story. It'll be easier for me. Uh, and so then Jesus said, well, have you kept the Ten Commandments? Oh, yeah, I've kept them from my youth up. Well, have you honored your, mother, your father and mother? Yes, I've done that. And so they went down through all the list of things, and, and, and he answered to the affirmative, yep, I've done that, I've done that. But Jesus looked into his heart, and he knew that there was an idol there. And the man really knew that, too, because if he would have had full assurance he wouldn't have come to Jesus and said, what good thing can I do to inherit eternal life? He had a question. And a lot of people in that position do have a question. And a lot of them end up being just like this man. So Jesus said, go and sell what you have and give to the poor and come and follow me. And it said the man went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. And that's so often the way it is with, with people who are full of themselves and, and they don't really feel like they have a need and they're not able to, to see themselves like they really are. You know, there's probably uh, three different categories of sin. There's the sins of the flesh and that's what we all deal with. Uh, the, the, the overeating, the um, the just the things that that tempt us and we fall into they start out as fun and and they end up um you know controlling us and then there's the sins of the spirit and that would be anger and greed and bitterness and you know those are the things that we sometimes it's a part of our nature maybe it's depression Maybe it's uh, laziness. It's the part of our spirit that we, we tend to want to blame the other person. And that one will, will end up controlling us too. We've seen these old people who are very bitter and very angry and very depressed. And they've allowed the, the, the sin of their spirit to control them. 
And then there's the sins of having your own righteousness. And that's the people like this young man who kept the law from his youth up. He did everything right. You know, in today's world, we'd say he probably uh, had a very, was very uh, disciplined. He got up at five in the morning. He went to the gym for an hour. He worked out. He came home and had a very healthy breakfast. Um, he had good investments. Um, he, he studied his Bible. He knew about Jesus, but he didn't know Jesus. And, but the problem is he had no compassion. And that's so prevalent with those kinds of people because what happens is if they lose their connection, like with Adam and Eve, you know, they walked and talked with God in the cool of the day and they had sweet communion, but then there was a disobedience and they lost their connection. And so they fell to temptation and they wanted to become wise. And so they ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And guess what? Their eyes were opened. They could see things more clearly than they had ever seen them before. They could define what sin was. They could say, this is sin and that's not sin. I've read it in the Bible. I know what I'm talking about. And, and, and they're the ones that you don't want to get into an argument with them about the Bible because they know the Bible. They know about Jesus. But guess what? They had no connection with the Father. They had no opportunity to lay in bed and say, God, I really, I'm really struggling. Because they probably aren't. They know the letter of the law. They have self-discipline. They keep the letter of the law. And then when someone uh, is less capable or not cannot perform as well, and maybe it's due to, um, to being run over. And I'm not talking about run over in a physical sense. I'm talking about in an emotional sense. But you take a person who has been run over and they've been abused emotionally, that it's very similar to being run over physically. So if I go out into the street and, I, and, and I'm very careful and I watch the light and the light turns and I start to cross the street and somebody runs through the red light and runs me over, keeps on going, big truck, and they don't care, and, and, and I lay there and I'm hurting and I'm bleeding, I have to accept responsibility. It's so painful. But I have to say, you know what? I'm going to forgive that guy. I'm going to accept the fact that I've been run over. I'm going to get up somehow and learn how to walk again. And that's the way it is emotionally. When we get run over, we get betrayed. We get let down by the doctors, the people who we went to for help. And, and, and it ended up costing us instead of aiding us. And we finally have to just accept it. It wasn't my fault, but I'm going to res uh, accept responsibility for my life. Because if I'm ever going to, to, to fulfill my purpose in life, I, I'm going to have to be able to walk again. And so we, we, we rise up, we touch the hem of his garment. And that's in humility and in faith. And we say, Jesus, heal me. And it might take several sessions. It's not always like this lady who had the issue of blood. Sometimes it's, uh, it, we reach out to God moment by moment and hour by hour and day by day. And sometimes it's like I talked about the other day. In that pain, we have developed an addiction. We may have a de uh, developed an addiction to a painkiller. And so we have to accept responsibility for that. We say, God, I, I, I've, uh, I've become addicted to this painkiller and I want to get off of it. But then one day when the pain is so great, we slip back into it again. And, you know, we, we already feel rejected and we feel betrayed and we feel hurt. And so um, it, it's easy to, to lose hope and say, there I go. It's hopeless. I'm not going to make it. No, God doesn't look at us that way. He's a redeeming God, and he wants to restore us, and he wants to reconcile us. The number one principle of the, of the gospel is reconciliation. That's why God sent Jesus to die on the cross, to die for our sins, to pay for our sin, so that 
we could be reconciled to God so that we could have a good uh, relationship with him. So the important thing is that we need to make a full surrender. There's a lot of people like the rich young ruler who are not able to quite make a full surrender. And I want to read about that here in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. You know, he had done a lot of good things, but he wasn't willing to, to admit that he had a need. So here in Hebrews 11, um, I'll start reading at verse 6. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and he rewards those who diligently or sincerely seek for him. And so today, that's my encouragement. If you've almost given up hope, don't give up hope. Turn to God. Remember that he cares. And you've probably heard this many times before. But somehow, uh, if, if I could just encourage you to go to prayer one more time and say, I need a miracle. I'm almost to the point where I think it's hopeless. If, if you're even feeling a call now as we talk, then I know that the smoking flax is still smoking and, and God can breathe life on it again. And I'm praying that he will and that you will experience a miracle and you will find the grace to, to keep on trying and to let go of, of, of the, the resentment and to forgive the one who's run over you emotionally. And I'm just asking God now, let's just have a special prayer. God, whoever this, this moment is relating to this message that you've brought, just ask you to touch them. Give them courage. Give them faith. Give them the humility that they need, that they can turn to you and they can find that healing and they can find the grace and the power that you have to give them. And they can find a relationship with you, God, where they can trust you and they can say anything to you and that the voices in their head that tell them they're no good and that they'll never be any good and whatever those voices are, Lord, you know, and they know. Help them that, that, that they can gain control of their thinking and that those strongholds can be torn down and that your love and your peace and your joy can come into their heart again so that they can have purpose and they can have fulfillment and at the end of, of life that they can have a home with you in heaven. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I think this will conclude the message for today. May God bless you.